And honestly, there isn't much buzz at all. Yeah. There's just incredulity that this massive list of legislation, it isn't going to get done, is it? Well, it's not going to get done because, as you rightly pointed out, it's probably two years from the next election. This is probably actually the last Queen's speech before yes. that election. Yes, yes. But given how they've struggled already in the previous parliament, you'd suggest they're not going to get it all done. We look at this, at Brexit opportunities. Again, you've rightly pointed out, why has that not been happening for two years? Mm. Um, Levelling up. I thought that was already at the heart of the government's agenda. The immigration bill, sending migrants to Rwanda. Mm. We know about that. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is the privatisation of Channel 4. We, we know lots of this stuff. There was mm. very little, actually, that was kind of new or, indeed, exciting. How much was there about the cost of living? Well, this is the other big point. Very little, again. Now, you may argue that trying to deal with the cost of living crisis is never going to be done in a Queen's speech. The government did repeatedly talk about trying to grow the economy. Again... Turbocharge. Turbo turbocharge the economy. Well, one can point out our economic growth since the financial crisis, our productivity has been pretty flat. This is a very, very big problem for Britain. I think what was fascinating today, though, it, are, are, are two things. First of all, the Prime Minister said we cannot spend our way out of this economic crisis. We cannot spend a way out of inflation. And the government, to be fair, is caught in a difficult position. What it doesn't want to do is pump more money into the economy or indeed give it to individuals that you could actually make the inflation crisis even worse, that you could turbocharge the inflation crisis. Mm -hmm. While at the same time, there is a recognition politically this is doing the Conservatives damage. We heard today from the boss of Tesco saying, these aren't people who are on benefits. These are my ordinary shoppers who come in, who come to the tills and say, don't spend more than 30 quid or 40 quid. Well, if it goes over that cost, leave the food in the basket because I cannot afford to take that home. And the government know they need to do something. The Prime Minister suggested it's going to come in a couple of days' time. We'll wait on see on that. We've had previous form. But frankly, the Labour Party calling for a, a kind of emergency budget, if you like. But frankly, I think something is going to have to give. Not entirely sure what. Windfall tax? I don't know. Chancellor's kind of been a bit... Uh, it hasn't ruled it out completely, but something is going to have to give, if it's not in the next week or so, certainly in the next couple of months. And the much vaunted reshuffle. There were many thinking that if things went badly in the local elections last week, that there would be a reshuffle. And when you think about it, you know, one in four Conservative candidates that was defending their seat lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't a good result. Maybe sort of Beergate and Starmer's problems sort of overshadowed that in the minds of the public. Any thoughts of reshuffles, or has that all now gone to the back? So the latest speculation is, and again, it is only speculation, that this could come before the summer recess. Now, why is that? Well, because ultimately, I think the Prime Minister, if he wants to properly reboot things, is going to have to wait for those police investigations from the Met, for Sue Gray's report. I think what you wouldn't want to do is kind of shuffle around your cards and right. then realise that you're still caught in a, a conundrum because of that. Uh, but you're entirely right, and I think people haven't reflected on this, the Conservatives did have a bad night last week. And what is fascinating is it's MPs in parts of London and elsewhere in the south of England who are now saying to the Prime Minister, hold on a second here, my seat is now at risk. Forget about the Red Wall, look what's happening down in the south of England, because we are concerned that the Lib Dems are actually yeah, yeah, yeah. the which, threat we, Which we saw. And a final thought, what was the mood of the backbenchers today? Were they, I mean, I guess they were pleased with these proposals. Yes, I think they are, because in the end, as you say, lots of this is reflective yeah. of what the government yeah. stood on in 2019, and won a thumping majority on, an 80-seat majority. I think the big concern is there's going to be opposition to this, not least of all in the House of Lords, and they can delay things. They're going to have to drop some of this. I mean, really, the privatisation of Channel 4, you know, that would be the first barnacle of the boat, if you like. But in the end, yes, if the government can make some progress on this, great. The one last thought I would leave you with, and this is why the economy is central to all of this, let's look at levelling up. As Michael Gove has pointed out, all that money set aside, that money doesn't go nearly as far as it did six months ago, a year ago, because of inflation. And that makes the government's task in a whole range of these bills so much more difficult.